Hi everyone, this is Yoli Bear and this is a very short video on how I underglaze my pots. Uh, a, a friend asked me how do how do I paint my ceramics and how does it how does the paint look and so on. So I just wanted to answer that in a very short video. I tried to find a video um, of how I do it and I couldn't find one. So here's my quick answer. So let's start from the beginning. Where do I get my pottery supplies? So I would shop at Tucker's for these. That's just where I shop. There are some other pottery houses out there, pottery supply stores that sell um, underglaze, but I've been shopping at Tucker's for years. And so that's what I'm gonna just tell you. They're, they're at Tucker's. Tucker's um, Pottery Supply um, Inc. And uh, so this one is Spectrum. Tucker's carries a wide range of um, pottery supplies, but I use uh, Spectrum because I've been using, again, Spectrum for years. <laughs> um, Spectrum is on the glaze, lead-free, non-toxic, dinnerware safe, and here are two colors. One is turquoise and the other one's cobalt blue. All right, so basically, let me, let me open the turquoise for you. Uh, they package it with um, tape around it. Um, so that just to keep it airtight so that uh, the water content doesn't evaporate and I just I just do the same I just keep it like that <laughs> um, so this is what the turquoise looks like uh, in the bottle and I keep it separate I usually um, take out a little bit whatever I'm gonna use and um, put it in a different container so that I don't contaminate my colors with other colors and so whatever is in this bottle is going to be true to what it is for me. So that's turquoise. The other one's cobalt blue. And so this is what it looks like on the inside. And that's your cobalt blue. All right. So I have a really small spoon that I got from a yard sale. <laughs> it's a really small spoon. And I just take out what I need from here and I transfer it into a smaller container, which is this container right here. I'm going to flip the camera back <laughs> real quick. Hold on a sec. Uh, transform and flip vertically. Here we go. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put the tape back on this one too so that I, I keep it safe from evaporation the water evaporating and it keeps nice and nice and good all right so uh we have some containers of colors here that i transferred with my with my little spoon <laughs> and um so how i started was i started with the primary colors and these underglazes you can mix colors to make other colors so for example um, this orange here, this was one of my earlier pieces. This orange was made from me uh, just mixing the, the red and the yellow. Uh, and uh, I also picked up turquoise because I wanted a different kind of blue, you know, to mix with the red and the yellow. <laughs> so uh, one of my earlier pieces. Uh, so and then this one's another one so these are what I use for my color palettes this is the red and black oh I also bought black um, and I also bought white but my white's done <laughs> my white is done because the white I use the white to dilute the color so if I wanted a lighter red I'd add white to it so that's kind of how how I mix just uh, just a little overview on how I mix the colors all right, you know what? Let's let's keep them um, bent over like this to just uh, show the colors. Okay, so right, so stages. So this is clay that I have shaped. It hasn't been fired yet. So you have two opportunities to use the paints on your on your pottery um, in greenware stage. So when you just make the thing from clay and put it down and let it dry um, to bone dry this this is how it turns out and so this is just clay that has dried and this is your first opportunity to use your underglaze after that it goes into the kiln at high heat and then it will come out looking like this the clay i use is uh, 
um M- MCS MCS or uh 650 uh that's the clay notations for tuckers I don't know any other um supply house but um 650 it's the white um cone 6 clay so it comes out like this afterwards almost the same color um, but this one's whiter so I use the white clay so that I can have a nice white canvas to paint on so this one was a piece this is this is it coming out of the kiln now and um, this is how it turns out after your first fire so this was just a Caribbean scene all right needle I haven't finished this yet it still has to go into the kiln so you have another opportunity to touch this up afterwards so this is going to be your second opportunity to brighten your colors up if you wanted to brighten it up maybe add something to it if you wanted to add more um more design to it this is your second opportunity to do it and then you'd put on your glaze this is a clear glaze i don't have the recipe for this i'm sorry this is the studio's clear glaze uh, but you put a clear glaze over it now and then you send it back into the kiln and then it should come out like like this nice and shiny so uh, you can't really use this anyway this isn't a finished mug until it's glazed with with real glaze <laughs> real glass so um the glass type glaze um because remember it's it, the what i just showed you was an under glaze it goes under the glaze so this is our our studio glaze it's just a clear glaze i don't have the recipe for it sorry but um you use the clear glaze and you put the clear glaze over your work and it will come out looking neat like this all right so so that was process and materials let's get to what the paints will look like and how i use them so i painted a butterfly for you i guess let's start with this one this one is one that i was working on it's a bee um and i have my hive tool here and i have my smoker here and the smoke is going up into the air and the bee is on a um frame of honey a honey frame and uh, this is just a little honeycomb design on the top here so this is the one that i was using and i was using here is turquoise and gray and yellows and oranges and more grays and a black black grayish black i i mixed black with gray here so and i have another design on the back that i wanted to do and this is just going to be a pendant uh so this is one that i painted but we're going to paint one now so you can get a feel of what the colors look like um so i add water to mine as you saw that it it it's really thick in the container it comes with so I add, I add water to mine to get it a little bit more loose uh, so what color let's make this a black cat so let's do black for the time being let's just start with black it's nice and easy and uh, so like I'm gonna use what's in the cap <laughs> it's easy to use what's in the cap so I'm just gonna use what's in the cap I'm gonna add a little bit of water um, maybe to here and we'll see what the cap has in store for us all right so the cap is a little bit thick so I think I'm gonna I am going to mix it here so when i was uh when i was a beginner i got some advice about underglaze i got some advice to say that underglaze is similar to watercolor so but with a lot of differences so you have to learn your media uh, this is too so whatever you're using you just get used to it you know what i mean um just use it experiment with it know it's um weaknesses and its strengths and um, work from that you can compare it to something similar in your life but um it's it has its own properties so you just have to learn what the properties are and and work with 
work with it because it's its own unique thing even though it has similarities to something that you already know you know what i mean just like clay is not paper <laughs> it has its own unique um unique properties to it so i'm just going to fill in my little cat here And um, similar to similar to watercolor, you have to make this dry before you put on your second coat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and it will leave your brush strokes. I just like watercolor too. I don't mind brush strokes. A lot of people are a little bit finicky about brush strokes, but I don't mind it adds character to the piece but just know that it will it will leave them and if you see spaces um, fill them in if you want to fill them in with color because it will leave the space and just another note um, some of this will burn away in the kiln so add add enough um, so that and that that's um that's one of the reasons why I do uh, my underglaze on greenware, so the first fire and the second fire as well, because I want to know how much of it burns away, and I'll I'll add more to it as as needed. All right, so that's my black cat. Let me uh. All right, needle. All right, so let me, and I don't waste paint, <laughs> so I'll I'll put it back. <laughs> I'll put it back in the cap, and then I'll rinse that off eventually. So, um, here's a black and white piece that I did. Um, I don't want to turn it too much because this is where I'm gonna rinse my brush and it's filled with water, but I'm just gonna show you um lines and um it filled in with black and stuff so i'm just gonna rinse my brush here and we'll put it back here and we're gonna go into another color i'm gonna make the ball red so this red is really um i need to put water on this to make it i'll just show you so it's real clumpy right now. I'm just going to throw it here. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of water to it to loosen it up. And uh, mix it a little bit. That's a little too much water. So I'm going to add more color. And uh, Mix it up a bit there. So now it's nice and smooth and I can apply it to the ball now. And depends on how intense you want your color, you you just continue to build up that color. Kind of like watercolor. <laughs> so so I think um, that's with the black cat. I'm going to let it dry and we're going to focus on the... Mm, the butterfly I think I'm gonna make this a turquoise butterfly so I guess you know it was too too early to put my black away so let's just uh, let's just put that here neat and then let's do the turquoise So these are in a little bit, this one's in a little better condition than the red. Uh, I don't think I'm going to add too much um, water to this one. I think this one's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go... And it acts like watercolor too, where 
if I change my mind, like I'm just changing my mind now, and I said, uh, I want to, let me put you back over here. I want to add some red to this, like maybe little dots of red. If you want it to come out red, you have to plan first for your dots, your little red dots. Because if you go over it with the turquoise first and then try to add your red, just like watercolor, the blue is going to come through on your red. And it might give you a purple and not a red. <laughs> but all of that, like, you have to test. You have to... I encourage you to test when you're doing your underglaze. Test what things come out to, to be. Um, and so I'm just going to go around around my red i made it harder for myself didn't i <laughs> it's okay i made it a lot harder for myself i'm gonna uh, loosen this up with some water so that it um, carries a little bit better flows a little bit better that one hasn't dried yet so I don't want to get too close to it all right we should be good okay this one has dried now so I can get close to it now let me just go over, go over it, yes. Get as close to the red as possible. There we go. All right, so let me add some more, some more blue to it to brighten it up a little bit more. So like you see, uh, it acts just like paint. And so I like to paint and I, this is why I like this this media. I like underglazed, and so most of my work is underglazed, underglazed pieces. All right. So that was great. This is where I'm going to end my demo. So we have two pieces, and one that I worked on for a very long time. <laughs> Three pieces. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was just a quick one and um, we'll, we'll do more uh, in the future because yeah. All right. So see you guys later. And I hope this answered your question, Mike. I hope you got a good idea of how, how this looks and I'll do a longer one. Um, maybe something like this in the future. If you want to see that, it's going to take a while though, <laughs> but but yeah, alright, so see you later. Bye!